Well, good afternoon, family. How are you today? Happy Friday to everyone. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will and you will rejoice and be glad in it. What a wonderful day. The Lord has kept us through this week. It is such an honor and I am excited to be back on with this word of encouragement to start off talking about relationships. So, word of encouragement for today is, can you stand the rain? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you stand the rain? Our key scripture is Matthew 22, verses 3 through 37 through 39. But first, let us pray. Let's enter into prayer together. Heavenly Father, I come to you again today with my social media family. Thank you, Lord God, for this day that you have made, Lord God. Thank you for getting each of us through this week. Thank you, Lord God, for still loving us like you do and still giving us your grace and your mercy. Lord God, have your way. Prick the hearts and mind. Let this word, Lord God, uncover some things within us and to challenge us and to really ask ourselves, can we really stand the rain, the rain that comes? that rain that shines and not just rain that rains upon us, but just life situations. See what we're really built about. So Lord, I thank you for what you are doing. I decrease so you can increase in me. Lord God, let the wounds and the spiritual eyes and ears of my social media family, as well as I, we are prepared and ready that they are open. And Lord, and continue to let your word work in us however you see fit so that we all can be effective representatives of you. We love you and we praise you and we thank you, Lord God. And we give you the glory and honor for it now in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Can you stand the rain? Go with me now to Matthew chapter 22, verse 37 through 39. I will be reading it in the NIV version. All right, let me make sure my screen up. Okay, Matthew chapter 22, verses 37 through 39. The NIV version says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbors as yourself. I'm going to read it again for those that may be joining. Matthew 22, verse 37 through 39. The NIV version says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbors as yourself. Family, what do you want most out of life? Most of us would rank healthy relationships high on the list, except for knowing Christ and having eternal life. Healthy relationships make life enjoyable, perhaps more than anything else. Even if your health isn't the best, if you have loving relationships, you can enjoy life. You can make a pile of money, but if your relationships are broken or shallow, your life will be empty. A poor man will have a loving family and good friends is far richer than a rich man who is poor relational. Say, can you stay in the rain? A loving relationship with God is of first importance, but loving relationships with others is second. The Bible is all about these two important relationships because the Bible emphasizes healthy relationships so highly it is said that there are so many believers who have hurting or broken relationships. Many Christian homes have been shattered by divorce. Some who stay married are unhappy. Their homes are a tense battleground, not a loving refuge. Many Christian parents are at odds with their kids and their kids with their parents. On the church level, some bounce from church to church, leaving a trail of damaged relationships behind. I know of many Christians who won't speak to other Christians because of misunderstandings, hurt feelings, and wrongs that have taken place. Sadly, the loving families, the genuine friendships, and healthy relationships that we want most out of life often eludes us. 
ask yourself, can you stand the rain? In our text, Paul gives the prescription for healthy relationships. If you're consistently practicing these qualities, you will have healthy relationships. But maybe you're thinking, but healthy relationships also depend on others, don't they? It's virtually impossible to have a good relationship with some people. True, that's true. Paul acknowledged this when he wrote Romans 12, 18, which says, if possible, so far as it depends on you, be at peace with all men. Sometimes, no matter what you do, some people are hard to get along with. I'm going to say that again. Sometimes, no matter what you do, some people are hard to get along with. But often, if you treat a difficult person with the qualities that Paul enumerates in our text, he will change for the better in how he relates to you. But even if some relationships never improve, if you relate to others, as Paul describes here, most of your relationships will be healthy, most of them. But this, is, isn't, but this isn't easy medicine to take because to develop these qualities, family, you've got to kill. Uh-oh, I'm going to tell you what you got to kill. Now, you've got to kill all immorality, impurity, passion, evil desires, and greed. You've got to put aside all anger, wrath, malice, slander, abusive speech, and lying. And you've got to put on a heart of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience, bearing with one another, and forgiving each other. The reason you should do this is because God has graciously chosen and loved you. Say, can you stand the rain? I'm going to have to read that last part again because I want y'all to really understand the importance. I understand that we've heard, we've heard this probably from many other, you know, in church homes, pastors, but this is very, mm, help me Holy Spirit. This is a very important because if it wasn't important, God wouldn't, it wouldn't be in God's word. You have to kill all. If you want to um, develop and have a healthy relationship, friendships, whatever, when you are with another human being if you want to have a healthy relationship you have to kill all immorality impurity evil desires and greed you've got to put aside all anger wrath malice slander abusive speech and lying amen and you've got to put on a heart of compassion kindness humility gentleness and patience bearing with one another and forgiving one another and the reason you should do this because god graciously chose it and loved you amen so family speaking of relationships can we stand the rain you know um <clears throat> i was thinking when me and god was talking about this as far as here with my transference so let, let me get it on out the way but um, as we were talking about um, relationships and when I think back on my life and from the beginning, from the time that you interact with another human being, um, you know, I've counted up my faults, you know, because I'm not perfect and I'm not no better. And I don't think that I'm any better than anybody else. And those relationships that I've had, trust and believe when I was at fault. I had no problem apologizing. Now, if they didn't receive me or if they didn't accept my apology, it's not too much that I can do about that because I knew my heart. I came with my heart. My The motive of my heart was sincere. Amen. And so you don't try to force people to accept you. You just can't. You can't control people. But the importance is for you to always be in good standing, for you to have your heart right before people and before God and so you know how back in the day right you know you know for example I love music I do 
I like music. I've always listened to different types of music, but see, when I listen to music, you know, sometimes a fuss, the beat grab us, and sometimes if you don't pay attention to the words, see, that's why I always tell you, we do, we have to guard our eye gate, our ear gate, our mouth gate, but you got to guard your hand. And so I, just like I am a picky eater, you know, sometimes some things I am picky on, even with people. You know, I do guard my heart and I guard, um, you have to, you, you have to uh, be mindful of the company that you keep. I do have that as a reference scripture, you know, because bad company does corrupt good character. Amen. But you know how back in the day, oh, I'm going to take y'all back in the day. Yeah, I'm going to take y'all back in the day. <sighs> it was this song, boy. Most of y'all know this song. Boy, I know, I'm telling you, when this song came out, it, yeah, it, <laughs> I was, yeah, that was my BC life. But when this, this was my jam. This was my jam. But listen, check it out. I'm, I'm, look, I'm going to try to, look, I ain't no singer. I'm going to try to put on my little singing voice. You know what I'm saying? And I know some of y'all going to be like, yeah, that was the jam. You know, back in the day. But remember this song. And y'all going to already know. All right, it start off like this. Because, you know, men, um, a group of men sung this song, so I can't be, I'm not going to be trying to sing like a man, so y'all just, you know, we're going to have fun with this right now, but it's funny, but I just want y'all to listen, look, remember the song, it goes, um, I, hold on, let me get some of the lyrics, <laughs> oh, I messed it up, but you know, you know how you know the beat, um, oh, help me, Holy Spirit, this is so funny, I'm going to be laughing at myself, all right, this is how I go, it says, on a perfect day, I know that I can count on you, Ooh. When that's not possible, tell me, can you weather the storm? Oh, cause I need somebody who will stand by me through the good times and bad times. She will always, always be right. Oh, the enemy tried to cut my song. Nope. All right, we're going to start over. Y'all know the song. Y'all, I know y'all probably was like, yeah, that's my jam. I don't know what had the enemy tried to cut my song. But all right, it starts. I got some of the words. It says, on a perfect day, I know that I can count on you. When that's not possible, tell me, can you weather the storm? Oh. Cause I need somebody who will stand by me Through the good times and bad times She will always, always be right there Sunny days, everybody loves them Tell me baby, can you stand the rain? Ah, shucks, the storms will come. This we know for sure, this we know for sure. Can you stand the rain? Yeah, yes. Love unconditional. I'm not asking just of you. Girl, to make it last. I'll do whatever needs to be done, no, but I need somebody who will stand by me. When it's tough, she won't run, she will always, always be right there, ow, sunny day. Everybody loves them. Tell me, baby, can you stand the rain? <laughs> Hallelujah. Y'all know that was the jam. That was the jam. Storms will come. This we know for sure. This we know for sure. Can you stand the rain? Ah, oh, shucks. Hallelujah. All right, let me bring it on in. <laughs> But for real, that, listen to the words, I'm going to go through the words, that words are powerful. 
Hey man, y'all know that was the jam. Y'all look, I ain't no singer. Let me let me let me get on out that line. You know what I'm saying? But I could sing in the spirit though. I could sing. I could sing. But nah, that's um just that. Uh, let's just have fun with this. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. But can you stay in the brain? You know, when we're dealing with relationships, you know, and friendships, everybody has their own suggestions. And um of course, we all have our set of beliefs and wants and all this and all that. But like the word says, like the first line, on a perfect day, I can count on you. Think about that. On a perfect day, I can count on you. See, when we meet people, it's all, you know, you... As for real, some people you meet, you meet the representative and they are nice and they sweet and they just so loving and you know, you get the googly on a perfect day. I can count on you. When that's not possible, tell me, can you weather the storm? Uh-oh, Houston, see what I'm saying? When that's not possible, tell me. Can you weather the storm? See, so do we really tell people, can we weather the storm with them after we meet them? So let's start with, of course, when you start dating, you know, and even in friendships. Yeah, y'all friendship nice. Y'all having a good time, you know? And then like this, like it says, after that, he says, because I need somebody who will stand by me. Amen. You want somebody that will stand by you, not be playing no no games, hemming and hawing, shucking and jabbing. So the first three, are, the, the, the words are power. Then it says, through the good times and bad times, she will always, always be right there. Amen. Always. It says, through the good times and bad times, she will always, always be right there. Then, of course, sunny days. Everybody loves them. Tell me, baby, can you stand the rain? Storms will come. Oh, yeah, yep, storms will. This we know for sure. This we know for sure. Can you stand the rain? Then, the next little verse, love unconditional I'm not asking just of you okay so go a little deeper but then he says girl to make it last I'll do whatever needs to be done hallelujah but here come the but but I need somebody who will stand by me when it's tough, she won't run. She will always, always be right there. We all want that for those single and courting. And for the, my married couples, y'all have probably already been through this. You see what I'm saying? So y'all better watch these songs too. I don't know some of these songs, they don't know what they be talking about, but I do. I listen to, I listen to the words and sh new addition. That was powerful. That's some powerful stuff. You can use you powerful, you know. But uh <laughs> hallelujah. Um, but we all want um because God said in his word, it's not good for man to be alone. Because you need somebody that will stand by you. But it starts with you, you have to be honest. Um about your stuff it always goes you know i always tend to go back on these videos about you because it starts with you but then back to our key scripture which says matthew 22 first you have to love the lord god with all your heart with all your mind with all your soul this is the first greatest commandment and the second is to love your neighbor as yourself you can't love nobody you can't really do nothing for nobody. So what in the natural, you may have materialistic things and stuff like that, but it's not beneficial and it will eventually fall apart if you're not loving God. If you can't even love God right, you can't love nobody else. If you can't even be a friend to God, can't be a good friend. 
to no one else. Real simple. God is not hard, brothers and sisters. He's not hard at all. You know, we choose to try to keep digging in our head and come up with reasons and thoughts and all this and all that, trying to be hemming and hawing and making excuses why you are afraid to open up and trust and love. Love is good. Love will make you live longer. And laughter. Like I tell y'all, live, love, laugh and be happy. God created us, our body to laugh. It's a release. And you should be happy and joyful with the one that you um, are with or the one that you look forward to come. I personally look forward to the king. I do. And um, transparent thought, you know, one of my core people for years. You know, they know me very well since I was a child. And I know this, and God spoke this into my life. I didn't really need anyone to tell me this. Throughout the years of my life, um, people have said it, but I already knew because it's a part of who I am. You know, I do desire a mate. I need a husband. I don't need no boyfriend. I don't need no sidekicks, no friends with benefits, none of that. I need a husband because God created me as wife, mature, you know, structured as a wife. Now, because of, yes, the past, the, the, from, from birth, from the environment and the contact of different atmospheres that I have grown up in and have encountered throughout my journey, yes, God will work and prepare me. But I've already been processed. It has already been stamped of approval that you're a wife. And guess what, ladies? Some of you are. You know, sometimes we ask ourselves, who am I? Yes, we wear many hats. You're a wife. Now, you have a choice on what type of wife you want to be or what type of husband that you want to choose you, you know, because you attract what you are. Now, some of y'all, y'all got to step it up in areas, you know. Some of y'all can't be trying to be the head and boss them around that side of order. We won't go deeper with that. It's out of order. Don't be talking to your friend or your mate or your, the person you significant to like a dog. That goes both ways. You know, don't be talking to her all trashy and rashy and all that. You know, because God and love is real simple. Because my thing is this. If you ain't talking to God crazy, don't be talking to nobody else crazy. You ain't talking, you ain't um, running off at the mouth disrespecting God. Don't be disrespecting nobody else. It's real simple. And you know, like I said before, my grandma would say, if you ain't got nothing good to say, don't say nothing at all. That's even with people. Don't open your mouth. You know, but um, seriously, when it comes to relate, to have a healthy relationship and friendship with anybody, you have to love God first. Amen. And you got to be honest about your stuff. Are we perfect? Absolutely not. Teresa Vini ain't perfect at all by a long shot. And I'm woman enough to admit that, you know, and I'm woman enough to admit my areas because it says, I read it, that um, I think I read it, but if I didn't, I think it's in one of my tips that I've been practicing on. But anyway, we have to be able to, um, for, for those, for my friends, my core people, even with friendships, you have to be at a place that you can be open to them. And not be afraid. Trust is very important. Trust is very, very important. And it's very, very skittish itish today. And you know why it's hard to trust a lot of people? Because the people that you want to trust, they don't trust God first. But then also you have to ask yourself, do you trust God? If you ain't trusting God, you can't trust nobody. Like real simple. That's going to be an area of work. And as far as relationships and friendships, you cannot. Be selfish. Amen. So, heh. Here it is. I'm going to be trying. I'm going to laugh at this. I'm going to be trying to be a single boy. I tell you, praise the Lord. The angels is laughing at me. Now, I done said that, but for real, I'm telling you, these fun, boy, that was my jam back in the day. Boy, y'all know it was. Some of y'all know I'm telling you, no addition. <laughs> Can't you stand the ground? <laughs> the storms are calm. Ah, anyway, but let's move on. Um, I got five tips. Look, I ain't even that long today. Five tips on building and maintaining a healthy relationship. And like I said, I always give y'all tips and things that I'm working on with you guys. So we're working on it and for my singles as well. But And I also have some reference scriptures that I want y'all to meditate and uh, think on as well. 
five tips on building and maintaining a healthy relationship. Number one, pray and rely on God's word. We must rely on God's word. We must totally trust him and him alone. I'm going to say that again. Pray and rely on God's word. We must rely on God's word. We must totally trust him and him alone. Amen. So can you stay in the rain? That's what I'm saying. Number two, encourage and build each other up. We must work together as one, not as two people. We have to build each other up and encourage each other. A relationship that is tearing down is not healthy and it's not of God either. I'm going to say that again. We must encourage and build each other up. For all for those that are dating and married for real, encourage and build each other up at all times we must work together as one not as two people we have to build each other up and encourage each other a relationship that is tearing down is not healthy and it's not of god either number three always be patient for god is writing your love story strive to be patient with one another and always think about how patient God is with you. We should show that same patience back to each other. Again, always be patient for God is writing your love story. Strive to be patient with one another and always think about how patient God is with you. We should show that same patience back to one another. Number four, Trust in both God and others. Here we go. I, I knew I was leading into one of my tips about trust. Trust is very important. We must first trust God. 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 We can trust that person we are in a relationship or friendship with. Okay, I'm sorry, let me go back. We first must trust God. When we trust God first, we can trust that person we are in a relationship or friendship with. We know that anything and everything that happened is in the will of God, that God will take care of everything as he is the provider and the protector too. Amen. And number five, humble yourself before everyone. Humble yourself before everyone. Part of putting the other person first before your own needs, you cannot be selfish in a relationship. I'm going to say it again. Humble yourself before everyone. For part of putting the other person before your own needs, you cannot be selfish in a relationship. Plus, you must give in a relationship, not be a taker. Oh, I'm going to hit that again. Some of y'all, y'all squinching. I can feel it in the spirit. You must give in a relationship, not be a taker. Another part of this is knowing when you need help and asking for help from the other person. God gave us a helpmate to help us. So we must humble ourselves to ask for help from the other person. Amen. So those are our five tips. Y'all, you know, I always give y'all home, you know, home assignment work. Five tips on building and maintaining a healthy relationship. Number one, pray and rely on God's word. We must rely on God's word. We must totally trust in him and him alone. Number two, encourage and build each other up. We must work together as one, not as two people. We have to build each other up and encourage each other. A relationship that is tearing down is not healthy and it is not from God either. Number three, always be patient for God is writing your love story. Strive to be patient with one another and always think about how patient God has been with you. 
we should show that same patience back to each other. And number um, four, trust in both God and others. Trust is very important. We first must trust God. When we trust God first, we can trust that person we are in a relationship or friendship with. We know that anything and everything that happened is in the will of God, that God will take care of everything and he is the provider and the protector too. And number five, humble yourself before everyone. Part of the other part of putting the other person before your own needs. You cannot be selfish in a relationship. Plus, you must give in a relationship, not be a taker. Another part of this is knowing when you need help and asking for help from the other person. God gave us a helpmate. And for those of us who's waiting, he will. He will give you a helpmate to help us. So we must humble ourselves to ask for help from the other person. Amen. Now, my reference scriptures, I broke them down for different um, types of relationships. For my people out there that are dating, that are courting, or you, you know, there's a person of interest, whatever you want to call it. You know, so many stuff they want to call and put Lord labels on relationship, you know, when you, you know, come in close quarters with other people. For my dating people, Proverbs 4.23, the NIV version says, above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows out of it. Amen. Number, um, second scripture is 1 Corinthians 6.18, the New Living Translation. For my date people, because you just dating, okay? Run from sexual sin. No other sin so clearly affects the body as this one does. For sexual immorality is a sin against your own body. Um, and if you may not know, some of y'all, if y'all don't know what sexual, sexual immorality is a general term for all unlawful intercourse, which includes adultery, prostitution, sexual relation between unmarried individual, homosexuality, and bestiality, which is sex between a human and an animal. You need to run, run from all sexual sin. Those sins are included adultery, prostitution, sexual relation between unmarried individuals, homosexuality, and bestiality. Amen. It's in the word. Look it up. I'm telling you, I'm telling you now. First Corinthians 15, 33. Do not be, like I said, do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. So you up here dating people, you better uh, check them out. Because bad company, if they ain't right, will corrupt and you got good, will corrupt good character. Second Corinthians 6, 14, 15, the New Living Translation says, don't team up with those who are unbelievers. How can righteousness be a partner with wickedness? How can light live with darkness? What harmony can there be between Christ and the devil? How can a believer be partnered with an unbeliever? Real simple, real simple. Now, for my husbands and wives relationships, these scriptures for you guys to meditate on is Matthew 19, 4 through 5. NIV version says, haven't you read? He replied that at the beginning, the creator made them male and female and said, for this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife and the two will become one flesh. Amen. Also, 1 Corinthians 7, 1 through 5, the NIV version says, now for the matters you wrote about, it is good for a man not to have sexual relations with a woman. But, hold up, since sexual immorality is occurring, each man should have sexual relations with his own wife. I'm going to say that again. Each man should have sexual relations with his own wife and each woman with her own husband. The husband should fulfill his marital duties to his wife. And likewise, the wife to her husband. The wife does not have authority over her own body, but yields it to her husband. In the same way, the husband does not have authority over his own body, but yields it to his wife. Do not deprive each other except perhaps by mutual consent and for a time, so that you may devote yourselves to prayer, then come together. Again, so that Satan will not tempt you because you lack self-control. All oh, the married couple, I mean, y'all know, y'all, and I was married before. Oh, yeah. Y'all make sure y'all meditate and, and um, work the word with that. 
Matthew 18, 20 is for where two or three are gathered in my name, meeting together as my followers, I am among them. First Peter 3, 7, husbands, in the same way, be considerate as you live with your wives and treat them with respect as the weaker partner and as heirs with you of the gracious gift of life so that nothing will hinder your prayers. That's a charge to the husband since you're the head. Amen. Now, for those that are uh, just for friendships, general friendships, whether, you know, me, brother, you know, men and men friendships and us women with friends with other women or, you know, strictly friendship, friendships alone. Proverbs 18, 24 says, one who has unreliable friends soon comes to ruin, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Proverbs 27, 6, the New Living Translation said, wounds from a sincere friend are better than many kisses from an enemy. So remember about the friends, rem just these scriptures are for those of us who we meet people and, you know, after a while, you have to really consider giving them the position in your life as friend. Amen. And uh, Proverbs 18, 1 says, an unfriendly person pursues selfish ends and against all sound judgment starts quarrels. And Proverbs 19, 4 says, wealth attract many friends but even the closest friend of the poor deserts them. So choose your friends wisely. Amen. Who you call friends, choose them wisely. So in conclusion, family, because God graciously chose us in love to be set apart to himself, we should treat others with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience, forbearance, and forgiveness. His gracious Loving treatment of us is the basis for our treatment of others. No, Now, maybe you're wondering, where do I start? You may need to begin by focusing on your relationship with God first. Have you trusted in Christ as your Savior, as your Lord and Savior, so that you truly experience his forgiveness, mercy, and love? You can't love others as you should until you right until you are rightly related to God. So, in a relationship or friendship, ask yourself, can you stand the rain? Amen. And also, I want y'all to remember, love always cures people. Love always cures people. Both the ones who give it and the ones who receive. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord God, with this time with my social media family. And I thank you, Lord God, for this word asking us, can we stand the rain? Yes, we love when, you know, think times are good. But when the storms come, just like that song said, you know, and they will. And you've told us, yes, because we're all subjected to trials and tribulations. Can we really stand by each other? Can we really be supportive of one another? Can we show the same patience and forgiveness and love that you show to us in the name of Jesus? And for those of us that may be struggling in that areas with other people in our friendships, in relationships, in marriages, those married couples that are struggling, you know, as they are growing, Lord God, help them to continue to focus on you together. Help them to walk hand in hand together and not abandon one another because of the situation. Help them to take their eyes off the problem and look to you, the author and the finisher, Lord God, of their faith in the name of Jesus. And for those that you are preparing a mate for, Lord, continue to let us, Lord God, continue to seek you and keep our eyes on you as well. And continue to trust you that you are preparing someone for us behind the scenes and they will come in, uh, in time. In your perfect time, they will show up and it will be easy for the two to come together in the name of Jesus. It will not be a struggle when it's from you because you are good and your love is good and it endures forever. And help us, Lord God, to continue to grow our love for one another so that it can endure forever. I thank you for this word, Lord God. Let it resonate in our spirit, Lord God. Let your scriptures resonate with us in the name of Jesus. Bless everyone under the sound of my voice, Lord God. Let this word, Lord God, continue to draw them closer unto you, Lord God. Continue to strengthen them, Lord God, as they in their private time continue to spend time with you daily in the name of Jesus. Also, Lord God, 
You don't want to forget. Continue to send the angels around the sick and shut in. Those who have suffered the loss of loved ones. Though, uh, send the angels around our children, Lord God. All, everyone, the brokenhearted, those that are struggling inwardly, that, you know, are silent suffering in the name of Jesus. Help them, Lord God, to love you and trust you first. And Lord God, let them know that you haven't forgotten about them and that they mean so much to you and they are so precious in your sight. But Lord, help us to love right, Lord God. We don't want to love wrong and we don't want to see wrong. Lord, help all, all of us to straighten our lives out again. And for where there are error and where we have made mistakes, Lord God, help us to own them and to ask for forgiveness and to forgive others in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you. I thank you for your grace and your mercy. I thank you for your patience. Lord God, continue to grow us up in the name of Jesus so that we all can be what you created us to be and live, love, laugh, and be happy until you come. I give you the glory and honor for it now. And all God's people say amen, amen, amen. Thank y'all. I thank y'all. So can you stand the rain? Hallelujah. Can you stand the rain? And I say, you know, I can stand the rain as long as God is before me. And I told you, I ain't living this life without the Lord. So, um, you know, he will definitely, and you also have to definitely keep him in the center of your relationships and friendships. You know, you can't even be friends with people without God being involved. You know, uh, you got to uh, watch who you choose to hang around and be friends with. Amen. So I'm not going to hold y'all hostage no more, but y'all know how we got to end this thing. I got to end this thing with seeing who is on, but I know that y'all are on. You know, let's see what we got. Can I see some dinghies? I don't see no dinghies. Oh, they coming. They coming. <laughs> Oh, let me hit the wave. Hey, Fanny. Oh, 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 Paula, watch it. Oh, let me hit the wave. Hey, Paula, Paula. Oh, Jamil. Oh, how you doing? How you doing? Let me hit the wave. <laughs> how you doing? How you doing? Yes, I am Avril. Oh, thank you. Oh, you are so sweet. You making me, oh, you making me mushy, Jemiah. I don't want to mess your name up. Jemiah Mullis Anderson. Oh, oh, thank you. I love you. I love because girl, I need you and you need me. That's so great. Y'all just do my heart good. Oh, they keep popping up. Oh, 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 oh. This is so good. Oh, thank you. Oh, my brother Sean on. Hi, Sean. Hi, hi, Sean on. Oh, brother Sean is in the house, y'all. Oh, Uncle Jermaine on, y'all. Hi, Uncle Jermaine. Jermaine on. Oh, Jermaine and Sean is in the house, y'all. How y'all doing today? Oh, thank y'all for being. They keep going fast. They go fast, go up. They go up and down like this. I don't know what it is. Like old school. Remember how you had black and white TV and the TV mess up and they go like this? That's how they be doing on my end. I don't know. I got to be talking to people who go like that. Oh, thank y'all. Oh, thank you. Yes. And um, Jemiah, you said you're needing prayer. I need healing through my body and healing through my mind. Oh, I decree and declare and cover you in the name of Jesus. Total healing and restoration over you and your son. It is done. You know, in Jesus' name, and you have to believe that. But in the same way, I want you to also trust God. And you also have to do your part in the healing process. You know, be mindful, whatever the doctors, you know, trust in God to trust in the knowledge and in um, what the doctors instruct you to do and do it also for your son. But I'd put the hedge of protection, the hedge of covering, you know, a hedge of uh, healing over you now in the name of Jesus. I'm putting my faith with you. Don't let my prayer hit the floor now, Jemai. Don't let it hit the floor because we're in this together. Amen. And God, I, I, I want to hear a praise report. I want to hear double total healing and restoration over you and your son in the name of Jesus. I'm settling for, I'm not settling for nothing less. Amen. So you do your part and let God do his part, you know, and I decree and declare it. I know it. I know it. I ain't saying this to make you feel good. I know it because I know him. He is a healer and he will heal you. And your son. Amen. Everyone, y'all cover Jemiah Anderson in prayer. 
Hallelujah. Thank y'all for being on with me. It is warm down here in Baltimore today. It's 75. Like I said, sunny days. <laughs> Everybody love them. Ho, but hold up. Can you stand the rain though? Amen. So thank y'all for being on with me. And as always, like I tell y'all to strengthen your relationship with the Lord. Spend time with him daily. No different than we spend time with one another. And even, you know, yes, y'all got to spend, you know, when y'all going to work too, y'all, we spending time with people daily. Dependent, you know, in all aspects, at work, at church, you see what I'm saying? So guess what? Make time for God. He's top priority. You make sure you make him first. Because if you can't love and trust him first, how can you love and trust in relationships and friendships? Amen. Thank y'all. Oh, I don't even want to let y'all go. It is so good to be on. Y'all know I love y'all. I tell you, I love God's people. And we're going to be all right. We just got to get back to the basics. And it starts within us. Amen. So I love y'all so much. God bless y'all. I ain't going to hold y'all hostage now. But I'm trying to, you know, see if somebody else pop on. Because they like, they go like this and then stop. And they go like this. So I don't see nothing new. And I don't want to be touching stuff and knock nobody off and all, you know. I don't want to, you know. But anyway, oh, also, for those that may come in later, I don't know how long y'all came in or whatever. If you weren't on from the beginning, you can go back on Facebook Live and review this video. Or you can review the video on YouTube because it will be loaded up on YouTube soon. You, well, in a few minutes after I get off, but it will be loaded up on, on YouTube. Um, you can search it by my name or search it by the title. Um, feel free to su subscribe to my channel so that you can see all the words of encouragement from, you know, moving forward and the past um, words of encouragement and uh, scriptures for today. To give you something to continue to uh, keep you focused on the word of God. And as you are journeying and building your relationship with the Lord, you can stay focused and those areas will get strengthened. And because um, we're doing this together and I am loving it to see that some of you are overcome. All of us are overcomers in some areas, but some of you that I know personally, y'all are overcoming over some stuff. And I am so, so proud of you. So, so proud of y'all. You know, and God is excited. He loves it. He loves it. And watch when the windows of heaven start opening up over your lives and he pulls out them blessings. Y'all going to go crazy because it's going to be bananas. The way that God is, um, because he loves blessing. His hands is itching for real. Y'all better watch the season. Yes. He, uh, many of you, he is excited. Y'all are in position and ready. And I am so grateful to be in the audience of your lives. And I'm glad that you're in the audience of my life. So again, I love y'all. God bless y'all so much. I don't see no dingy. Y'all know how I do. I be trying to drag on just to see some, but it's so good. I love y'all. I know it'd be many. I don't know. Like I said, maybe it's my phone. I don't even know. But guess what? Praise be to the Lord for you guys. And I decree and declare anybody have to go out, safe travel, you know, and I'll go back and, uh, but like I said, whatever situation or, you know, you're in, whether you got friendship, date, no marriage, you know, I've given you um, other scriptures pertaining to those who are in those situations uh, with your relationships. Amen. So I love y'all. God bless y'all so much. Thank y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I love y'all so much. God bless you. And God, remember, God loves you more and he hasn't forgotten about you. Amen. He is always working behind the scenes in our life. So we just have to step it up and show him how much we appreciate him by letting him use us and also to love one another. Amen. So the next, I will be back on um, with another word. We're going to still, I'm going to still talk about relationships, but we're going to home in on unity. You know, we really have to talk about unity, even with each other, because sometimes people just throw other people away or they just disconnect and it's just you know we're going to still because we got to start at the basics and it's within us and it's with our one another amen so i love y'all so much god bless y'all have a wonderful wonderful afternoon god bless y'all mwah, mwah, mwah. much kisses i don't see the word thingies but i got to go love y'all and some of you i will be calling soon god bless y'all and have a wonderful day